So I've been asked to kind of drop a list of, of different wood products. These are uh, composite wood products. Uh, and say a little bit about each one, uh, a little, something about the types of wood that go into making them, and, and uh, something about um, some of the applications that these things can be used for. So it's quite a long list. Um, and I'll probably forget something halfway through, but we'll see how we go. Um, so starting with particle board, particle board is made from chips, essentially wood chips, uh, which are produced strangely enough in a wood chipper, although you can produce them using things like hammer milling and things like that. The chips are fair size, I mean you can see them, they're, they're visible to the naked eye. Um, it's generally speaking considered to be a bit of a low, a low end product. It's normally laminated with something to make it look nicer, but inside this laminate uh, quite often you'll find kitchen units made of this sort of stuff. You will find the particle board. They used to be pretty dreadful products actually, but uh, the technology has improved quite considerably over the years. And certainly one of the things they try and do with particle board products now is have a, a core and a surface. And the surface is usually made of much smaller particles. So they might use some centrifugal or they might use a, an air classification system or some other classification system to separate the particles by size. Smaller ones on the surface, so you get a smoother um, surface effect. So you can get screws in, you can sand, you can do something to them. But obviously, if you cut through that surface, then you're on the bigger particles, and then it, it it's a bit more like cornflakes. Then when you get through, so that sort of thing is tends to be you'll find that in kitchen units, shelving, this sort of thing. It's fairly low end, um, but you can use all sorts of off cuts and chips and thinnings and all sorts of stuff and recycled wood of course so for that reason very very popular product uh, very often for furniture often uses a urea formaldehyde based resin system so it's not really very moisture resistant osb is is a, a more expensive type of particle board generally speaking osbs will be made from from virgin wood um, and they're more produced by shavings so these shavings might be sort of that sort of length. Uh, there is a limit to how long they are. Uh, and they, there is an attempt, first of all, the shavings will lay flat because the way that the mattress is laid up in OSB, obviously these things will be laid flat. They don't run across the sort of the, the grain of this mattress. And there's some attempt to make these uh, shavings line up, but a lot of OSB panels are used in walling. Uh, very, very popular for, for house construction. And, and here you've got racking uh, of the panelling. And so the kind of forces uh, just for OSB that you might be trying to resist with racking, the forces that run in that direction. Um, so uh, they're called structural insulation panels. Um, and because of that, those are the kind of directions you might want the particles to be oriented in. There is some attempt at orienting, but they, it's, I wouldn't say it's totally random, but it, it looks pretty random when you look at it uh, to the naked eye. The sort of adhesive that you'd use for an OSB is, is a, a moisture resistant adhesive. Uh, it'll be something like uh, a phenol formaldehyde or a, a urethane, polyurethane type adhesive. MDF, uh, this is made from fibres. Um, the big thing about MDF uh, is that you can machine edges, so you can have profiles. So MDF will tend to be used for higher end furniture than particle world will be. Uh, it will still be laminated, although some MDFs they will just paint them, because uh, you can get quite a smooth surface with MDF. You can sand a pretty smooth surface. MDF, the actual individual wood fibres are separated and then joined back together. And as I was discussing with Mark earlier today, the, the, the technology for getting the adhesive on MDF of the wood fibres of MDF is pretty sophisticated. Um, tend to be more, the urea formaldehyde uh, adhesives tend to be used more for interior applications, but there's a lot more use of, of polyurethane based or a mixture of the two. You won't really find phenolics used for this sort of thing because they, they just don't coat the fibres in the same way because of viscosity issues. Uh, so an MDF will be used mostly for higher end furniture, it'll be used for door frames. Uh, not so much for window frames because there is an issue with the fibres that if water gets in the fibres will swell even if you have a moisture resistant adhesive. Um, there has been a development where um, an MDF product is made using acetylated fibres which now have this dimensional stability and that will allow large long profiles to be made for windows, for doors, uh, 
exterior um, joinery applications, um, which hasn't really been possible. So MDF really is an interior a product particle is an interior product. OSB can be used for exterior applications. But I put in a couple of other DFs here. HDF, which is high density fiber. We used to call it hardboard in, back in the day. Uh, it doesn't use an adhesive. Um, hardboard's made well, yeah, it's made using uh, a kind of a gun. It's called a masonite gun, where you heat up the chips to a pretty high temperature and explode that into a chamber. Uh, and what happens is the lignin, you're way above the glass transition of the lignin, the lignin flows all over the fibres. Um, and then you can press these fibres together and the lignin will glue them together. So it's not that moisture resistant. I don't see it so much around these days, but it used to be, you know, if, if people that do remember HDF or hardboard, a very, very smooth surface, one side and like a wire side on the other side. Um, don't see it around so much, actually. Um, LDF. Um, that's more a product where you're trying to make insulation boards um, these days. So uh, you have a lot more space between the fibres. Uh, and these fibres don't have to be... The thing about uh, MDF fibres have to be made in refiners, so you need high quality input. Um, so it has to be like virgin fibre input. HDF, similar sort of thing. You probably could get away using recycled wood. LDF, you don't have the same requirements at all because um, you, as long as you've broken the stuff down into fibres already, then you can use all kinds of sources. So it's a really good way of using um, waste uh, paper, paper that's been through a large number of cycles. Eventually, of course, the fibres get degraded. But if you take a little bit of that um, output from the recycling and you kind of, um, it's the way you form it to make the low density that's important. And the, there's various other um, versions of this, they're called pulp moulding. But if, if you dry the fibres without them collapsing on each other, you can then use those fibres in a, um, an insulation type product. And very little adhesives are required to hold those together because they're not structural, they are really for insulation purposes. Plywood, I think we've covered in a number of other talks, the plywood is made usually by peeling, rotary peeling a log. Um, it doesn't have to be, you can slice and get plywood uh, uh, lamellae or um, you know, layers, but that's generally for the higher, more um, sort of decorative type of plywoods. Um, plywoods are, uh, each part of the plywood is laid at as Mark said, orthogonally, 90 degrees to each other. Um, you have to balance the plies so that you will have, a plywood will have something like a three or a five or a seven layer ply so that there's always a, uh, an uneven number because if you have on one side, if you have a six layer or a two layer or a four layer, that ply will distort when it gets wet. I think we had a demonstration of a single piece of ply, well it wasn't ply, a, symbol, a single lamella um, distorting when it got wet on one side. So you have to have these balanced layers and they're at 90 degrees to one another, so orthogonal. Plywoods, you can make beams out of plywoods, but they're not really ideal because obviously if, you, if you're bending a beam, you want all the fibres to be on the long axis of the beam and with a plywood, half the fibres are going to be at 90 degrees. An LVL, you can line up all of the fibres in the same direction. The, um, the plies in an LVL generally are thicker than they are in plywood. So a plywood would tend to be used as a board and again it's really good structurally um, a bit like an OSB, it will resist racking forces quite well. Rather more expensive generally than OSB, so it tends to be used in higher end applications. Uh, plywoods were used to make aircraft, probably still are. They used to make boats, they were used to make boats, they're still used to make boats. Um, you can get very sophisticated plywoods that can be laid up by hand where you're actually orienting the um, the fibres in specific directions to resist specific forces. LVLs, as I say, here we're looking at something that's much more likely to be a beam 
Um, so we'll have long and thin structures and we would have all the fibres oriented in the same direction um, to make a good beam structure, so that's more of a structural thing. Glue lambs, uh, the thing about a glue lamb is that it's a lot of pieces of wood, they're not as thin as uh, the plies in an LVL, um, and they're basically finger jointed, glued together as finger joints, and then these glue lambs are laid together again to make beam type structures. And very good structures they make too. Uh, and CLT is a bit of a development of that. Um, it came along really to use the the lower quality wood. And with a CLT, you, you're back to this idea of using 90 degree orientations, although there's been some research looking at other orientations. So it's, it's the same sort of thing again. You might have a three or a five or a seven layer CLT. And a CLT will make a panel. Um, so you use a lot of publicity about these tall buildings that are being made using CLTs because CLTs are, uh, can be uh, fabricated the panel can be fabricated off-site, the windows can be cut, the doors can be cut, all the, even put all the services in, then you, you crane in the CLT panel into site and just screw them together using various fixings. So these can be used structurally, um, they can be used for ceilings, they can be used for floors, they can be used for roofs. Um, another one that's just occurred to me, somewhere between the sort of plywood LVL um, in that area, there are various products which use laminated wood. Um, these sort of things might be used for flooring, they might be used for ceilings, they might be used for shaped architectural sort of panels, these sorts of things. And there you might have various orientations and you might have a ply that's on the top that is very decorative. So there's a whole bunch of products that sits in that kind of plywood LVL region where you might have these 90 degree orientations, you might have them all the same orientation or you might have a mixture of those various things. So flooring, ceilings, walls, doors, all these sorts of things, furniture. Very commonly used if you want to have these really quite interesting shapes. Um, that kind of laminated structure is very popular for that and was used a lot in the past actually. Uh, and then we have WPC, which is wood plastic composites, which are fairly new composite systems. Um, here we have fibres. Technically, we're supposed to be using recycled, like maybe recycled MDF might be a, a product that's actually becoming available now because MDF was actually proved to be pretty difficult to break back down to the fibres, but there's now technologies for doing that. So using these MDF fibres, you could put these into wood plastic composites, and I think that would be a very good uh, use for these. You could reuse them in MDF, of course, but that might not be so simple. Um, the thing about a wood plastic composite is that you have wood fibres embedded in a, a polymer, a plastic, something like polypropylene, sometimes polyvinyl chloride. Um, the big advantage with these is that you can extrude very, very long profiles, infinitely long if you wish, so you can decking, um, window frames, these sorts of things. Uh, and that hasn't really been possible uh, up to now to actually press or extrude a continuous profile. I think we'll be able to start doing it with MDF. It hasn't really been used a lot, but I think maybe with these uh, MDF products that are much more um, exterior grade MDFs, that might start to happen. But certainly with WPCs, we see a lot of things used for decking, this sort of thing. Um, the big thing about our WPC is that the wood isn't really compatible with plastic, so you have to have some sort of intermediate, what's called a coupling agent, to make sure that the, <coughs> excuse me, the wood particles are bonded to the plastic. So a lot of the earlier ones tended to use uh, hammer milled particles, fairly small, uh, or they were ground or something like that. Um, I think if we start to see a lot more MDF type, recycled MDF going in there, we might start to see this sort of idea of fibre orientation becoming more popular. The WPCs don't really have any structural integrity, but I think if we can start aligning fibres, we might start to see a, a sort of next generation product, very much like we've done with all these things. The earlier generation products were not as good as the later generation. So I think there's a lot of potential for development there.
So I think that will do as an overall brief introduction to the different wood composites.